we talk about the model context protocol or MCP, we talk about this as the USB-C port of AI. And what that basically means is one standard interface to connect any AI application to any data source. And MCP allows for building once and using across many different applications and interfaces. To give you a bit of a picture for the model context protocol, the model context protocol or MCP follows a client server architecture. And when we talk about the protocol, not only is the protocol completely open source, it is also model agnostic. So this can work with any model that supports tool use, which at this point is almost all of them. With the client server architecture that we have, MCP clients or model context protocol clients are in charge of fetching resources or data exposed by the server. They're in charge of invoking the tools that the server has passed to them. And they're also responsible for interpolating prompts or predefined templates that a server can provide. You can imagine a rich interaction where quite a bit of prompt engineering is required. You might not want your users to have to do that all on their own. So provide a dedicated prompt template for them. Instead of users having to bring in and write additional tools, give that functionality to them. And MCP servers can be built by companies specifically. They can be deployed locally or remotely, or they can be used by the open source community. We see a tremendous amount of companies and open source providers building MCP servers for the entire ecosystem to use. Some of the primitives that we have in the protocol, like I mentioned, tools, these are functions that can be invoked or retrieved by the client. Think of this like a post request with HTTP, retrieving, searching, updating records. We also have resources or read only data exposed by the server that the AI application can choose to use or not. We talked a bit about prompts or predefined templates. And then there's also another primitive that I want to talk about called sampling. As you can see here, there are two arrows going back and forth between client and server. And if for some reason the server needs to request inference, the server needs to talk to a large language model, that can live on the client and the server can do so using a primitive called sampling. It might need additional information. It might need to summarize something that is being sent or translate something and use a model to do so. So this protocol provides bi-directional communication. Clients talk to servers, servers talk to clients. Many times we see users using existing MCP clients, plug code, for example, an MCP client. We also see many companies building MCP servers to support that. And when we talk a little bit about servers and the MCP server ecosystem, like I mentioned, there are many different servers that you can use, which also leads to a potential challenge. If there are 50 or 100 or 1,000 MCP servers to support an integration to something like Gmail, how do you know what is trusted? How do you know what is verified? And with that, what's coming next for us in the MCP community is an official MCP registry API. And this provides two very valuable pieces. One of them is a trusted, verified, and centralized source for users across the board. The other is a dynamic discovery tool for agents. Instead of your agent having to be provided all the tools necessary and be overwhelmed with hundreds of tools, the agent can instead dynamically discover the tools that it needs by going to the MCP registry and saying, oh, it looks like I need the official Grafana server. It looks like I need the official Gmail server. Consuming those tools. And if it needs a long connection, it can maintain that. Otherwise, it can use those tools to find, consume, authenticate if needed, and be done. So this ability for the registry API to allow for self-evolving agents makes this so much more powerful than just a static resource for agents to consume tools. You can think of this where a user might need to ask the agent a question, help me manage my store on Shopify. Instead of the agent being given all the tools necessary to do everything with Shopify, the agent first checks to see if Shopify has dedicated and trusted MCP servers. Once it does, it sees what capabilities are exposed, it sees what authentication is required. It sends it back to the user. The user authenticates properly. And then the agent has access to the tools, resources, and data that it needs to perform an action. If it's done after that, no problem. Close the connection. If it needs to remain stateful, that can be done as well using the transports that we have. So this ability of bringing in the context that we need drastically improves the ability of agents to be accurate, to be productive, and to use the tools that we actually want them to use in the real world.